I'm going to start off this section about how to build your own CCNA lab with the option that I would personally recommend if it's at all possible for you and that is to build your own physical lab with its own physical Cisco routers and switches. A big benefit that you get from this is this is the only lab option where you're actually going to be able to physically touch the equipment. Now, later on, when you've got more experience working within networking, you're going to realize that probably 99% of the time, you don't need to actually touch the equipment because you're going to be in, for example, New York, and you're going to be working on a router or a switch in Boston, so you're nowhere near it. And the way you connect is you open up PuTTY on your desktop and you connect to it remotely. So when you're actually working real world, you don't actually need to physically touch the router and the switch. However, when you're first working with this, it's going to give you more confidence when you do get the chance to actually physically touch it. And sometimes you do need to physically touch the routers and switches. When you buy one brand new from the factory, you need to hook up with a console cable to do the initial configuration really the only way that you can get practice of physically connecting a cable up to do the initial configuration, also practice of physically cabling the devices to each other, and also to see what they physically look like, the only way you get that is by having an actual physical lab. Other benefits you get from having a physical lab is it's a one-off cost. You pay for the equipment one time, and then you own it forever. With the other options, they all have a recurring cost. So you're either going to be paying by the hour or by the month or by the year for your usage of the lab. By buying a physical lab, you know what your costs are going to be. They're fixed right at the start. You just pay it the one time. Another benefit you get from this as well is if, for example, you're using online labs and you're paying hourly, it can get really frustrating if you're stuck on a problem and you can see that it's eating up your lab time and you want to move on to the next task. Well, when you've got a physical lab, it's not costing you any more if you take ages on a single problem, so it's not going to be so frustrating for you. You're not going to feel that you should be moving on quicker. You're going to be comfortable with taking your time and learning something for a bit longer if you need to do it. Another benefit you get, you see here in the pros column, is you can start small and grow and it will support any level of certification. So you're starting off with the CCNA, there's a really good chance that you're going to move on to the CCNP and maybe even further after that as well. If you buy a physical lab, then you can grow it as and when you need to. So you can start off with a small lab for the CCNA. If you end up doing the CCIE later, you can still be using the same equipment, you're just going to build on top of it. Okay, that's all the main advantages of having a physical lab, but there are a few drawbacks as well. First off, it takes time to purchase and install. You're probably going to be buying this off eBay or some other online auction store, unless you've got money to burn. So you're going to have to shop around to find the good prices. You're then going to have to wait for the equipment to get shipped to you. And then when it does get to you, you're going to have to unbox it and physically put it together. So all the other options, you'll be up and running a lot quicker than you will by building a physical lab. Another thing is, you need somewhere to put it. This is a particular concern if maybe if you're in a relationship, I know that my wife is not going to want me to have a Cisco lab lying around in the living room, and if that's the only place I've got to put it, that's a problem. Now, if you've got somewhere, some spare space to put it, no problem, but this can also sometimes be a concern. Another thing is that all of the other options can be accessed from anywhere. With the physical lab, you have to be physically there. So you're probably going to have this built at home, meaning you're going to have to be at home to work on the lab. Now, there is a way that you can work around this. You can put in a remote power switch, and then you can connect to that over the internet to power on your devices, and then you can connect to your devices as well. It adds a little bit extra complexity to building the lab though, and there's going to be some additional cost there as well, but you can normally pick up a remote power switch for around $100 on eBay if you're based in the US. 
Okay, so that's all the pros and cons. Let's see how much this is going to actually cost. Well, the best way, the cheapest way you can build a physical lab, and this is often possible, is by borrowing the equipment from work. Now, you don't even need to be working in IT or on the networking team right now. If you're working for a medium to large size company, the chances are that they probably do have spare Cisco routers and switches if they're using Cisco equipment. The company's probably been around for a long time. Their networking team will have been aging out the old equipment and they'll put it in a cupboard somewhere and it will have been sat on the shelf for ages. And if you just ask the networking team, you tell them, hey, I want to study for my CCNA. Do you have any spare routers or switches? There's a really, really good chance that they're going to be able to help you out. But if that's not possible, maybe you're not working for a medium to large size company right now, or maybe your company just isn't able to lend you routers and switches, the other way is you can buy it yourself. Now, in most locations, there will be network brokers where you can buy refurbished routers and switches, but almost always eBay is going to be a cheaper option than that. Now, if you're in a country that eBay doesn't exist, then it's harder for you and maybe you will have to source it from somewhere else and it probably is going to be more expensive. But if you're in a country that eBay does operate in, then that's almost certainly going to be the cheapest way you can build the lab other than by getting the equipment from your office. So it's probably cheapest if you're in the US for buying the equipment. So if you're in another country, don't take these prices as gospel. It's probably going to be more expensive for you. If you're in the US, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can either buy a pre-built CCNA lab or you can buy the components one by one and build it yourself. If you buy them one by one, you can shop around a bit more and you can save a bit of money that way. But it's more convenient to buy an all-in-one lab. The kind of prices you'll be looking at to buy a pre-built all-in-one lab, it's around $350 in the US. If you're building your own, I'd recommend buying maybe a 2950 or a 3550 switch. You don't need anything more powerful than that for the CCNA level. You can pick those up for around $30 each, including postage in the US. And I would recommend using a 2800 router. You don't want to go too old on this because you do want to have some scalability in your lab to support your future studies as well you can pick up a 2800 router for around $70 on eBay, again, including postage. Other things as well is don't forget to buy your cables as well. You're going to need to cable the equipment together. If you do want to buy that remote power switch, one that I would recommend is the Pearl remote power switch because they are quite common on eBay. You can pick them up for around $100. It doesn't have to be from Pearl though. If you see one from another manufacturer, that's just fine as well. Let's actually have a look at this. So I'll jump onto the eBay website. Uh, this is eBay in the US and I can search for CCNA lab. And when this page comes up, so you see there's different lab options in here. Now you need to be careful with this because it's not like there's a set standard for a physical CCNA lab. And that's why there's different price points in here because different people will be offering different equipment in their lab. So be careful and check what you're actually getting. Somebody might advertise something as a CCNA lab and maybe it's just got one router and one switch in there. That's really not going to cut it. I'd recommend that you get three routers and three switches to be able to practice all of the different features. Again, there's different models of routers and switches as well. So be careful and check what you're actually getting here. If you don't want to buy an all-in-one option, the other way you can do it is by shopping for the individual components. For example, I could look for a Cisco 2821 router. Actually, a 2811 would be fine and that will maybe be a little bit cheaper. So let's look for that. And you see you get varying prices in here. Actually, it's because I said CCNA 2811. Let's change that to Cisco 2811. It's going to give me better results. And hopefully I'll find some in here. Yes, for around $70. So there's $74, $70. And you see that includes the shipping as well. So that's the kind of prices you'll be looking at. Preferably, 
get one with a serial interface in there already as well so that you can do all of the different WAN protocol labs as well. If you get one and it doesn't already have a serial interface, you can buy that separately, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. To get more information about how to go about building your physical lab, the equipment to buy and how to cable everything together, we can just Google for that. There's loads of information on the internet. So I'll go to google.com and I'm going to search for CCNA physical lab and you can see all of the top hits I'm getting here explain about how to go about doing that. A word of warning here, check the date that the article was written on because Cisco do come out with new equipment regularly and what was right for the lab five years ago is not going to be what's right for the lab today. So just check that you're using a, a recent article. Okay, that's everything I needed to tell you about building a physical lab. I'll see you back in the next lecture where I'll cover using online labs.